Welcome back to episode two of the 330 diesel touring track build project. I'm currently on my way to This Is Your Garage where we will be fitting a brand new set of Eibach coilovers to this car. Tomorrow, the plan is to take this to Kerbera Sprint Track where we'll find out how much faster this car is with the coilovers. Let's do it. But before we whip out the old suspension and install the new coilovers that you can now buy on the car throttle shop, I had an interesting chat with Eibach General Manager Greg Kirby to get up to speed about the importance of suspension and how it affects vehicle dynamics. The first principle is one of the separation of ride and handling. So ride is the isolation of the occupant from the road surface and the other is the maintenance of load through the tyre contact patch. In order to produce grip you need load to be transmitted through the tyre to the road and for tyres to produce consistent grip they need consistent load and the tyre can be overloaded and when that occurs slip occurs. You can produce that by either entering the corner too quickly by making too violent a steering input or when a car's ride height is set too low you load it up and then a bump comes along and you have insufficient bump travel to absorb that bump. You hit your bump stop and then that impulse load is sent straight through to the tyre which overloads it and causes slip again. Too stiff a spring, you have an inconsistent grip but you will have roll control. Um, too lower a vehicle, you will have a lower centre of gravity which does reduce weight transfer in a corner but if you solo that you're contacting with your bump stops over bumps, you'll cause those impulse loads to the tyres and that will cause slip. And the reality is, is that if you lower a car to such a degree as to lose that bump travel or put springs on that are so stiff that it can't roll, ironically you'll end up with a car that's less dynamically competent than the standard car you started off with. What we haven't talked about yet is the role of dampers often referred to as shock absorbers, but actually the real name is dampers because springs are shock absorbers. That is shock. Um, a damper's main role is the control of motion. So a spring accommodates imperfection and supports the vehicle. But a great example is the release of stored energy. I've stored energy into the springs there and then the damper has controlled the release of that energy. If we didn't have dampers, the car would pogo along the road and on a minor level, the load would vary through the tyre contact patch and in extreme, you would have wheel hop. You may hear uh, phrases like oversprung or conversely underdamped mm -hmm. and really buying springs and matching them with a damper from another manufacturer. They could well work together, uh, but that would be luck rather than design judgment. Now that we know the basics, it's time to crack open the box and check out Gareth's new coilover suspension. This is our Pro Street S. Some of the design features that we're quite proud of with this, stainless steel body, but a glass reinforced plastic spring seat. So no, no galvanic corrosion can take place between the two of them. We've used a stiffer spring, stiffer than standard, but not too stiff because of all the characteristics we talked about earlier. And this combination is what we call a main and a tender spring. Um, and this creates a dual rate characteristic. So you end up with a softer initial rate. Um, and if you imagine that's your straight ahead position. So you've got compliance, you've got comfort, but if any aggressive bump maneuvers take place in suspension bump terms, that can be cornering, this spring closes. And then the total system rate is purely dependent on this stiffer spring. So we preserve the comfort, preserve the directional stability, but then when you press on, turn in hard or brake or accelerate and so on, this spring will close. We're going to be running these coilovers obviously on the 330D track project. Tell me, how do you think this is going to affect the car in terms of turn in, slip, all the rest of it? The slightly stiffer spring will reduce roll. You can lower the vehicle to an optimum height, being mindful of bump travel, and that will further reduce roll but also reduce weight transfer, so you'll go round the corner quicker. It will just lift the limits that it currently has. Ride height adjustability-wise, you will set that for the track that you're driving on, and it depends how bumpy that is. Um, obviously, the, the more rough the track, the more bump travel you need to afford yourself. So on the rear of the car, the damper actually sits separately to the spring, so not a coilover in the conventional sense of the word. However, the ride height adjustability is provided by a threaded perch which sits at the top of the spring. Ride height is a fantastic tuning tool, especially when you're talking about driving on track. 
because most OEM vehicles are set up for a partially loaded condition. So in their curb state, the, the back end of the car tends to be rather high, and that's because you could put three kids and a load of uh, shopping in the boot and so on, and it still needs to work in, in that condition. So Greg, once the coilovers are on the 330D track project, is it a case of just going to the track and smashing it around, or is there something that needs to be done before? Yeah, you should really have the vehicle realigned. So that the suspension geometry is what determines the, the attitude of the wheel and that contact patch to the road. When we've got the coilovers on, uh, would it be beneficial to say widen the track? Um, yeah, widening a vehicle's track is another way of reducing weight, weight transfer during cornering. And if you look at the high performance versions of a lot of German cars that we all know and love, RSs and M3s and so on, they all run a slightly wider track for that very reason. Um, you could do that using wheel spacers. My only cautionary note would be that you use high quality wheel spacers because it's ever such a critical joint and any lack of concentricity between the hub and the spacer will cause vibrations and all manner of other issues. Right, so now it is time to install those lovely IBAC coilovers. I'm joined by Adam again from Volks Technics, who's going to give me a hand today. Your first job is to uh, change the water pump. Important actually. in every coilover installation. The water <laughs> pump actually uh, failed on the way to this is your garage. I'm going to start disassembling everything to put the coilovers in. So hopefully we should get everything done in, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, at least. Swapping old suspension out for new coilovers is a relatively straightforward process that most of you guys, including me, will no doubt have done on our driveways on axle stands. Meanwhile, underneath the bonnet, water pump bearings have failed, resulting in that play, which will just let the water straight out the back and all down over the pulley out the front of the engine. To get the original top mounts free, I use a hydraulic spring compressor and an impact wrench to loosen the top nut. Then it's a case of fitting the top mounts to the Eibach coilovers, slotting everything in place and removing the OEM drop links. So if we look here on the ground, original drop link, and here's the drop link that uh, IBUC provide with their uh, coilover kits. That's probably about four inches shorter. You can't afford to uh, lose four inches, except when you're changing your suspension, in which case being shorter is a good thing. And with the IBUC drop links in place and the coilovers bolted tight, this is the awesome result. Now it's time to turn our attention to the rear, which annoyingly means the carpet needs to be removed for access to the damper retaining nuts. With the old ones removed, the new dampers go straight in, as do the new Eibach springs. Then it's just a case of attaching the wheels and voila, suspension swap complete. So it is the end of a, what feels like a really a short really, day, but, but a really long, quite a long what, day. What, You've worked your magic yeah. putting a new water, water pump. pump. I did the front Fronts. coilovers and then we smashed out the rear Rears coilovers. In about five minutes. I'm now going to drive to Leamington to Spires Tuning to get the car set up. Thank you very much for your help again. May the M40 be with you. Thank Come you. Here. An hour north up the M40 motorway, I arrived at Spires for owner Matt to work his geometry magic to get the new coilovers set up for track attack. After two hours of corner waiting, changing camber angle and a full alignment, the 330D was now ready for action. The next day, Gareth was back at the track with a lower ride height and renewed vigour. Already from driving the 330D here, I was blown away by the sharper turn-in, massively reduced body roll and ability to soak up bumps amazingly well, so I was excited to see how well this translated on track. So let's not waste any more time. The sun is shining, there are a few clouds about, but the, uh, the track is bone dry. Remember, we haven't changed the wheels and the tyres yet. That comes next week. So it's going to be interesting to see what difference just the Eibach coilovers are going to make and the drop links as well, don't forget. So here is lap one of three. Ethan, I'm ready when you are. Count me in. Three, two, one, go. 
don't rev it too high. You can already feel how much nicer and more compliant this car is through corners. Turning is so much sharper. This is going to be a very, very messy lap as I get used to these Eibach coilovers. However, I think we're going to be good later on. Come on! Not, not convinced with that at all. I mean, that was a very poor lap, very messy. I'm going to guess that was a... Uh... 41.8? Not that bad, it was 40.55. Okay, so we are 0.4 of a second away from the fastest lap last time as an OEM car. And that was, I mean, that, that was a horrific lap that I just did there. So I need to neaten up quite a few things. I reckon we've got this. Count me in when you're ready. Okay, three, two, one, go. There we go, that's a better start. I don't want to go above 4,000 RPM in this. I should be getting some nice heat in the tyres now. Oh, these coilovers, let me tell you, are incredible. Oh, I'm getting so much more oversteer because the chassis is so much firmer now, the suspension set up. Come on, I can do that corner so much more smoothly. Oh. oh no! The dynamics of this car are completely different now. Ethan, I think that might have been a very slight improvement, but there is so much more time to be gained from this car. That was actually 40.63. Okay, bravery pills need to be taken in large quantities. Just send it. When Ethan says that, you know you're in trouble. Three, two, one, go. Tidy up this line. Turn in, come on, full power. Come on, let's go. We need a diff, desperately. Oh, come on. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I need good tires for this because the suspension is the best thing about this car by far and everything else is letting it down including the driver. Uh, that was more commitment. These coilovers mean that I can literally chuck it in more harshly into corners so I can think about using different gears here and there. I think it was quicker. You did it in a time of 39.85. 39.85, we've broken the 39s. Not content, however, I went out for a fourth lap. But as you can see from moments like this. This is wild now, oh my God. Oh, he's, oh, he's nearly gone. And this. The Pirelli P0 Nero tires simply couldn't handle the now more dynamically capable suspension. So 39.85 seconds was the time I'd go home with today. If we break down the footage of the 330D piece by piece in its stock form versus the car with Eibach coilovers, you'll notice a few things. One, the steering inputs I have to make with the coilovers fitted is reduced for turn-in. However, I'm having to correct more on corner exit because the rear of the Touring is now more keen to lose grip. This is because the standard tyres it's on are past their level of grip, so a new set of Nankang NS2Rs should fix that. If we look at the first corner, you can see that the 330D takes the turn flatter, and you'll also notice that turn-in is sharpened up. This rear shot also shows how much body roll has been reduced, which should save some time and tee me up for the next corner more efficiently. For the final fast and heavy loaded left-right transition before the finish line, you'll notice the standard car's massive body roll, which loads up the outside tyre to the point of slight understeer. In the case of the Eibachs, the load exerted on the outside wheel is far less, meaning exit speed should be slightly higher. 
So then after a few laps and a lot of sweat, I mean, I'm pretty much drenched at the moment. The best time that I did in the 330D Touring Track Project was 39.85. That's an improvement of around 0.25 seconds compared to standard. And that is thanks to the coilovers. The limiting factor that I'm finding at the moment are these tires and these wheels. Speaking of which, next week we'll be changing those. So hopefully everything should be working organically, harmoniously. So check it out then. Don't forget that you can check out the rest of the episodes right here. You can subscribe to Car Throttle here. And for all of the parts and accessories, plus more that you see on this car, you can check out the Car Throttle shop right there. See you next week.